Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. I begin with the name of God and I send peace upon his messenger Muhammad. As a Muslim and a follower of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, I'm deeply shocked and uh, frustrated with the attacks that have happened in Paris. It's deeply saddening to see that people who are trying to interpret my faith have resulted in the death and injury of so many. But the matter of fact is, if they actually looked into the faith, that they, this would not have happened. These people were not known for, to be people of faith, rather they were known for their previous criminal convictions. Had they even looked to the one that they supposedly were defending, they would have learned something different. Narrating the story of the Prophet, when he went to a town and he was stoned, and he was expelled from the city, we have a narration in our faith where God asked him, do you want me to destroy this town? But instead he said, no, I will pray for them. So he never, when he was insulted, he, he turned to pray to them. These men in Paris were not acting out of the love of God and his messenger, but rather they were acting out of their love for violence. They may have thought that they were doing a good deed for the religion, their prophet, but in fact they have caused more hatred against Islam, so they have done more negative towards their own faith if they were Muslim. This has caused an increase in Islamophobia and hate. They have not defended the prophet, they have not defended my religion, nor have they represented us in any way. The Qur'an says, and be patient with what they say and keep and address them in a beautiful manner if someone is to insult you. The Qur'an instructs believers to argue in challenge ways, um, which is best and most gracious. The attacks on Paris symbolize nothing that is close to these Qur'anic instructions, but instead represent a distortion of my faith, which teaches pain, patience, forgiveness and love, not that of hate, anger and rage, which has been demonstrated in Paris. Thank you. Hello. I want to say three words and a symbol to show my grief and my solidarity with the people in Paris and the people in France. And those three words are, of course, Je suis Charlie. Maybe we can all shout them. Je suis Charlie. Ready? And then three more words, which will call for action, really. Yes, we have to have our grief and our moment of silence, but we need to think about actions from here. And those words, of course, are liberté, égalité, fraternité, liberty. Liberty is the freedom of expression, the freedom of information, and that freedom extends to expressing things that other people find abhorrent, that are painful, or else it means nothing. But that freedom does not extend to harming people. So liberty. And then egalité. I think the meaning of that word when it was used by the French revolutionists was equality before the law. But I think it has a wider meaning in my call for action. We need a more equal society. And for me, part of the reason for what has happened, there's no excuse for it, but part of the reason is people feeling excluded from society. And we, particularly as politicians, must work to make sure that we live in a more equal society in every sense. Finally, fraternity. Fraternity is the call to us as people, as human beings, as members of communities. Fraternity is reaching out to our friends, our families, our neighbours, people that we work with, people that we see when we use the health service, when we work in education, when our kids are at school. Wherever we are, as somebody's already said, we are integrated as a society, but we need to work on it. We need to reach out. So, égalité, fraternité, and above all, liberté.
to introduce the Mike Fitter, the Sheffield Buddhist and the leader of the Sheffield Faith Leaders Group. It's wonderful to see so many people here who are still here in this cold afternoon. I think we're here because of solidarity and because of grief for what's happened. And I want to particularly pick out one particular aspect. One of the victims this week in Paris was Ahmed Burabet, a French police officer who was shot and killed. He was 42 years old. He happened to be patrolling the area, which was his neighborhood, and he's now survived by a wife. His brother Malik, in a report on television, in an interview on television said, he was a Muslim and he was very proud of being a police officer and defending the values of the Republic. Speaking for a group of relatives gathered in Paris, Malak said, the terrorists who ignored his brother's plea for mercy as he lay wounded on the street may have shared his Algerian roots, but they had nothing else in common. He added, I address myself now to all the racists, the Islamophobes and the anti-Semites. One must not confuse extremists with Muslims. Mad people have neither religion nor colour. Malak then added, I want to make another point. Don't tar everybody with the same brush. Don't burn mosques or synagogues. You're attacking people. It won't bring our dead back and it won't appease the families. So what do we make of this? It's about a terrorist group trying to shut down free speech. Je suis Ahmed. I stand for defending free speech. Je suis Ahmed. As he did, and he lost his life. I also stand for dialogue. I'm co-chair of the Cohesion Advisory Group in Sheffield and I know how important dialogue is and it's more important when we're faced with difficulties like this. There are different world views and they are important. Vive la difference. So how do we live together in this interconnected world in which identities and borders are less solid than they used to be? where the assumptions I formed as a child are no longer the case, where I know I have much to learn as I get to the later years in my life. We need to find a way to talk about our differences, not to scapegoat specific groups, but to face the difficulties, to engage in a spirit of learning and loving our shared humanity. In, the, in this event itself, I'm aware of differences that emerge. And I know that the differences are important. And I recognize the challenges they present to us. And I know the importance of solidarity. My question then to us is, how will we take the first step in dialogue? To believe in the importance of dialogue. To believe that we can each make a difference in these dangerous times. Will we take that first step? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'd like to now introduce Joseph Connor, who uh, represents the Sheffield Rotary Club. Lord Mayor, Bishop, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Joseph Connor of the Sheffield Rotary Club. I've lived in France for 10 years before coming to Sheffield, and I know how devastated that nation will be following the tragedies of last year. It is a fitting tribute that you have turned out this afternoon to show solidarity and concern. On behalf of the 
the Sheffield Rotary Club, I would like to add our support. Rotary is a global organisation comprising of more than 30,000 clubs representing 1.3 million members. In five years' time, our club will celebrate 100 years of service to the city. On a Monday evening, we meet for a meal, and I would guess that we have four or five religious faiths or denominations represented, together with those that choose an agnostic or atheistic position. At a recent meeting, we had seven nationalities present as we increase our links with the young people of Sheffield Universities. Rotary unites under the banner Service Above Self and supports a large variety of charitable projects in the city and beyond. Freedom of speech and expression, together with the tolerance associated with no sectarian divides, makes our efforts possible. In France, I have read Charlie Hebdo and Le Canard Enchaîné, and in England, I enjoy Private Eye. Humour is undoubtedly a wonderful catalyst and a means of communication. As part of the human psyche, it cannot be constrained. However, those that practice the art professionally do need to exercise a degree of caution, as there is occasionally a fine line between comedy and provocation. This is a small, overcrowded world where communications technology is available to almost everyone. It is increasingly important to stop and think before one presses the send button. In Rotary, we have a four-way test before this moment. Is it the truth? Is it fair? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Our society is still made up of nation states whose leaders must do their best for their people, whilst globalization issues confront them. Not an easy task. They must protect humour as part of free speech, but we must be aware of the international pitfalls. If one ends up mistakenly translating Je suis Charlie into I am a Charlie, the result is clear. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Sheffield, I am pleased to have shown solidarity with you and our friends in France. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Joseph. Um, I'm myself going to say a few words now. Um, I didn't want to write a speech or a reflection. Apologies for the quiver in the voice. Um, I've, I've written a, a poem. Um, I hope you like it. I hope the sentiments and the words will uh, mean something to you as well. Okay. Je suis, I am my mother's dream held close. Je suis, I am my father's vision held high. Je suis, I am my sister's friend in need. Je suis, I am my brother's keeper of hope. Je suis, I am the bridge for my children's future. Je suis, I am for my friends light in the dark. Je suis, I am bred in Sheffield from sparks of iron ore and made of steel to make me strong. Je suis, I am sanctuary in my city for the stranger far from home. Je suis, I am my city's gift. Je suis, I am Muslim. Je suis, I am solidarity with all here today. Je suis, I am you. Cherry, more comme je vous chéri, cherish me as I cherish you. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to introduce uh, Colin Press, who's the uh, sorry, Colin Ross, who's the leader of the Liberal Democrats. Thank, thank you. Um, there's been a large number of speakers here today, and there's a reason for that. 
we all wanted to be associated with this united front of Sheffield showing how we wanted to stand out against the atrocities perpetrated in France last week. We must use this opportunity to bring us together, not as some would want us to do, to use this excuse to divide us. We live in a free society. That freedom allows people to practice whatever religion or not they choose. Equally, this freedom allows, allows people to criticise. There are two flip sides of that. There can never ever be any excuse for the barbarity and murders of last week just because what has been written or drawn. A free society brings with it responsibilities that it needs to be open. As other speakers have alluded to, perhaps one of the most poignant moments of last week was the fact that it was a Muslim policeman who was guarding the offices of the journalists. And it was a Muslim policeman who was murdered by the so-called other Muslims when he was carrying out his duty because, as his brother said yesterday, he believed in the French Republic's maxim of freedom, equality and fraternity. I want to associate myself with the other speakers who have spoke, spoken so eloquently today about the situation and reiterate that as Sheffielders, as the British United Kingdom, <coughs> And as citizens of the world, we must stand together on this and not let the tragic events of last week be used as an excuse to divide us in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Um, our final speaker for today is Roger Farrington from the Humanist Society. Good afternoon. I'd like to begin by expressing my deep sorrow for the senseless loss of life in France this week. The victims, a cross-section of society, were just going about their day. They were citizens of a free and tolerant society, living lives where people slaughtered them in cold blood due to what I can only imagine to be their perverted interpretation of Islam and a desire to sow fear and discord throughout Europe for political ends. If we wish to respect the lives of those who died, we cannot allow this to happen and should continue to take a firm stand against those who would divide us. We must remember that whilst the journalists and the cartoonists who died in the attacks were atheists, Muslim police officers died trying to protect them and Jewish people, simply doing their shopping, were killed in an act of unadulterated hatred. The loss suffered affects people of all faiths and not. And yet, let us also not forget that a young Muslim man saved Jewish hostages during the Paris siege by hiding in the freezer, at great risk to his own life. Whilst it is true that Charlie Hebdo is not everyone's, to everyone's taste, the issue of freedom of speech and freedom of, freedom of expression is not just about having the right to draw offensive cartoons. It is the right that defends and defines all others. Without it, there will be no human rights, there will be no freedom, no freedom of religion, no equality of any sort, and certainly no democracy. The answer to free speech that you don't like is never violence. It is more and better free speech. It is the only way that we can form a dialogue and overcome the issues that might separate us. And at this difficult time, we must cherish and defend this precious yet fragile boon to humanity. I am not a religious man. I have no faith in the divine. I do not believe, sorry, I, I do believe that we have one life in this place, here and now, and it is for us to find a way to make the world the way we want it to be. We have it within our power, and the way to do this is to treat everybody with the dignity and respect that we would demand for ourselves. 
and to find a way to strive to overcome our differences and live together in peace and prosperity. I would just like to say that this event has not, would not have been possible without the help and support of a great many people. I would like to thank Lord Mayor, the City Council staff, the elected City Councillors from across the political spectrum, the Faith Leaders Group, the Police, the local media, and especially Rachel Sanchez of the Elections and Equalities Involvement Team, who, without whose tireless efforts, this event would not have been able to happen. She deserves as much credit as anybody else, and probably a pay rise too. <laughs> I would like to thank the people of Sheffield for attending this event. They have all made me so proud of my adopted city today. It warms my heart to see so many people from such diverse backgrounds coming together in solidarity at this very difficult time. You are what makes this city the brilliant place to live in that it is. So in conclusion, I hope you'll agree with me when I say that no matter your race, religion or creed, today we are all Charlie. Thank you. the organisers and the speakers as well, I'd like to thank every single person who has come out today. Thank you for standing in this cold weather. Thank you for showing your solidarity and your unity and being here. Thank you for making it count uh, and mattering as well. Um, I'd just like to say now that um, this Remembrance event has come to a close, uh, please hug the person next to you because it's so cold. Uh, <laughs> I love one another. Please go in peace. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here today. Just before you all go, one final announcement as well. On the 26th of April, uh, Burn Grieve, there will be the Peace Walk in Burn Grieve. People of all faith and no faith, you are all welcome. Thank you.